Wormwood, I wonder why you ask whether it is essential to keep the patient ignorant of your own existence. That question, at least for the present phase of the struggle, has been answered for us by High Command. Our policy, in your area, for now, is to hide behind myth. We can converse freely here on the internet where we will be taken just the same as any other fiction, but to directly reveal yourself to your man would be far too real for him and not seem like a myth at all. Of course, it has not always been this way. We are faced with a cruel dilemma. When the humans do not believe in us, we lose all the benefits of direct terrorism and we make no magicians. On the other hand, when they do believe in us, we cannot make them materialists and skeptics. At least, not yet. I have great hopes that in time we can so emotionalize and mythologize their science that what is in effect a belief in us, though not under that name, can creep in while belief in the enemy remains impossible. If we can produce this perfect work, the materialist magician who basically worships what he vaguely calls forces and denies completely the existence of spirits, then the end of the war will be in sight. But for now, we must obey our orders. And I don't think it will be very hard to keep your patient in the dark. The fact that devils are so often a comic figure in the modern imagination will help you. If he begins in the slightest to suspect your existence, show him something like this, and then convince him that since he cannot believe in that, he certainly cannot believe in you. I had not forgotten my promise to consider whether we should make the patient an extreme activist or an extreme conservative. All extremes, except extreme devotion to the enemy, are to be encouraged. Uh, not always, you understand, but in this time and place. Some ages are lukewarm and complacent, and then it is our job to soothe them even faster asleep. Uh, other ages, of which this is one, are more prone to faction, and then it is our job to inflame them. Any small group bound together by interests which others dislike or ignore tends to develop inside itself a sense of mutual admiration, and towards the other, pride and hate, which is entertained without shame, because the cause is its sponsor, and it is thought to be impersonal. Even when the little group originally was for the enemy's own purposes, this tendency remains. We want the church to be small, not only that fewer may come to know the enemy, but so that those who do may acquire the uneasy intensity and defense of self-righteousness of a secret society or clique. The church herself is heavily defended, and we have not yet given her all of the characteristics of a faction. But smaller factions inside we have had much success with, from those of Paul and Apollos at Corinth all the way down to the two warring Baptist churches on a single street corner. If your patient becomes an activist, he will find himself part of a small, vocal, organized, and unpopular society. And the effects of this on one so new to Christianity will almost certainly be good. But only almost certainly. Has he had serious thoughts about civic duty before this conflict began? Can he, when he is nearest to honesty, for no human is ever very near, think that he is really doing this out of a motivation to serve the enemy? If so, then I fear his activism will do us no good, and the enemy will probably protect him from the usual consequences of belonging to a sect. Your best plan in that case might be to inflame in him some distaste for the actions of some activists, and through this emotional confusion hope that he emerges as an uneasy convert to conservatism. Such things are often easily accomplished. But if he is the man I take him to be, Try activism. Whichever he adopts, your main task will be the same. Let him begin by considering the conservatism or activism as a part of his religion. After that, let the partisan spirit allow him to believe it is the most important part. Then guide him to the point where he eventually thinks the Christianity is only part of the cause, and its primary benefit is the arguments it can produce in favor of his side. The attitude you want to guard against is that in which temporal matters are primarily seen as material for obedience. Once the world is the end, and faith the means, you have almost won your man, and it doesn't matter at all what sort of worldly end he is pursuing, provided that meetings and pamphlets and causes and crusades are more important than prayers and sacraments and loving his neighbors, then he is ours. The more religious, on those terms, the more securely ours. I can show you a pretty cageful down here. <laughs>